Welcome to Code Report, episode 13. I'm your host, Connor Hookstra. Let's take a look at the contest that happened last week. Last week, we had a ton of contests. We had from Hacker Rank the week of Code 37, which went on throughout the week and is still ongoing and ends tonight at 3 a.m. We had from Code Forces round 475 on Tuesday. We had the start of the nine day long April Circuits contest from Hacker Earth. We had the first online round from the TCO that's brought to you by Top Coder, the Top Coder Open. That happened on Saturday at noon. I forgot to mention that last week, but luckily there's a second online round that happens on May 3rd in case you missed it. And we also had the weekly leak code contest on Saturday evening. And we finished off the week with the Code Chef April cookoff that happened just today. Taking a look at the top 10 leaderboards from the Code Forces contest, we had uh, 00 finishing in second. We'll call him Vuv finishing in first, Ray Woosh in third, Umnik uh, finishing in fourth, and then Dream Moon finishing in eighth. And from the uh, April cook-off that happened this morning, we had uh, Tourist or Gennady finishing in first, uh, Natsugira finishing in second, and Yui finishing in seventh. And then we also had Yui making a sixth place, having a sixth place finish in the lead code contest, as well as Natsugiri uh, finishing second. And our overall uh, leaderboard on Code Forces had a few changes. So 00 moved from fourth to second. Umnik dropped from second to third. Tura stayed at fifth. Raid Woosh stayed at sixth. Vuv uh, knocked off Fate Ice and is now ranked in seventh. And the bottom three, there were no changes. And in today's video, I'll be covering problem two from today's Code Chef April Cookoff entitled Binary Nim. And then I'll be releasing uh, at least two uh, solution videos for the week of code problems three and four, and potentially uh, one more. So let's take a look at our first problem. The problem that we'll be covering in today's video is problem two from Code Chef April Cookoff entitled Binary Nim. The problem states Tweedledee and Tweedledum are playing a first match of Binary Nim. This novel game is played with n stacks, each of them containing only ones and zeros. Just like in normal Nim, Tweedledee and Tweedledum alternate turns. In their turn, a player must choose one non-empty stack and remove a positive number of elements from the top of this stack. However, Tweedledee may only choose a stack with zero at the top and remove elements from it afterwards, and similarly, Tweedledum may only choose a stack with one at the top. The player that cannot make a move loses. Suzumo does not want to wait for the end of the game, so given the starting player, he asks you to determine the winner. Remember that Tweedledee and Tweedledum are legendary grandmasters of combinatorial games, so both always play optimally. And note that the constraints for this problem are uh, T will be the number of test cases, and that'll be less than 500, N will be the number of stacks we're given, which will be less than 50, and uh, the number of uh, zeros and ones in our stack is going to be less than 50 as well, between 1 and uh, 50. So let's take a look at an example. So here is our example. We have t equal to 1, that's our number of test cases. We have n equal to 5, that's our number of stacks. d will be our starting player, and then we have our stacks described below. So note that uh, the beginning of our stack is the top of our stack. So visually what this looks like as, is as follows. So basically the way the game is played is D is able to take off only blocks from stacks that have a zero at the top and it's vice versa for dumb. And uh, we're told that they'll play optimally. So basically it's just a bit of game theory on figuring out how to play this game optimally. And the way we can think about this is that D has control of uh, the stacks with zeros at the top, and Dumb has control of the stacks with ones at the top. And if you're going to play optimally, you don't want to give up control of your stacks because then it it uh, enables you to make sure that you're optimally taking off uh, as many times as you can from that stack. And if you don't have control of it, then you can't take off any any blocks from that stack. So what that means is that whenever D or Dumb remove some blocks, uh, they always have to remove at least one, a positive number. So they'll remove the top block, and then they should remove any uh, blocks immediately below that that aren't their number. So uh, if, if D's going first and 
uh, he or she is going to remove uh, blocks from the second stack, uh, he should remove uh, the one below it as well. So that means that uh, it the stack will remain in D's control. So if he does that, it'll look as follows. Uh, and so now it's Dumb's turn. So say Dumb wants to remove blocks from the fifth stack. Uh, he or she should remove all of the blocks in this stack as well, because if she, if he or she doesn't, uh, it gives D more opportunities to remove blocks and it doesn't help uh, Dumb at all. So Dumb should just remove this whole uh, stack. So going back to D's turn, D could just remove these two blocks and then it would be Dumb's turn. So Dumb could remove these three. So removing both of the zeros at the same time, leaving the one. And now Dumb only, or D only has one stack to choose from and there's no ones in this. So uh, he or she should just remove the blocks one at a time. And then so Dumb will remove these two here or sorry, that one there, and uh, D will remove one here. Then Dumb will remove uh, the two here. D will remove one here. Dumb will remove these two. And then D has one left, and so on the next turn, Dumb won't have any more, and uh, Dumb will be the loser. So you would output D because D is the winner of this game. So if we go back to our original state of our game, what we'll notice if we take a look at the blocks that were uh, taken off sort of at the start of the turn, it's all of the blocks that are of the same number um, of the block at the top. And so this count, if we sum all these uh, counts of the ones matching uh, blocks or stacks with a block one at the top and zeros uh, that match uh, stacks with zeros at the top, we can just use these totals and compare them in order to get our answers. So basically, uh, whichever player has more uh, zeros for D and ones for dumb is gonna win the game. And there's only one corner case to catch and that's if they are the same amount. And if they're the same amount, then the winner is going to be the person who doesn't have to go first. But other than that, uh, that's how you can uh, figure out how to solve this problem. So let's take a look at our code. So here we have a function binary nim that takes a vector of strings, which we'll call stacks, and a string that is the person who is going first. So we initialize two variables, a and b, and then we loop through each of our stacks. And basically, if the top uh, block in our stack or first element in our stack is equal to zero, then we're just going to count all of the zeros in that stack and add them to a. And if it's uh, not a zero and it's a one, then we are going to add them to b uh, for the the count of the ones and then at the end all we do is we check if a is equal to b then we, re we return uh, whoever is not the first player and uh, otherwise we just check if a is greater than b then we know d is the winner because there was more zeros uh, else we know dumb was the winner because there was more uh, ones so that is the uh, entire algorithm that you need so taking a look at our Java code, it is very similar. Um, the only two differences are that we can't use the equal equal operator because uh, that uh, does not compare the strings. It, re it compares uh, reference equality. And uh, we don't have the STL in Java, obviously. So there's no count function that comes with Java, but you can use uh, a couple different function calls and then a lambda to count the number of zeros and ones in our string. And taking a look at our Python solution, uh, very similar to the other two, um, just making use of the count function uh, that will operate on strings. And then uh, we don't have the ternary operator in Python, but they do have their form of it, which doesn't come in the form of an operator, but more syntax. You just put uh, your first condition, if it's if your first result that you want, if it satisfies the condition, else what you want to return. And the last thing to talk about is the time complexity. Uh, as we are only doing uh, a single loop, um, well, we're doing technically two loops, but if we consider the full length of all our stacks, it's just going to be a linear runtime in the full length of all our stacks. And note that technically we have uh, potentially more than one test case, so in that case our runtime would be big O of t times n. Taking a look at the contests that are happening next week, uh, we have the Hacker Earth April circuits throughout the week. 
Uh, they're releasing problems every couple of days. On Saturday, we have the Code Chef lunchtime that starts at 10 a.m. And of course, that evening, we also have the uh, Leak Code weekly contest, Contest 82. And then on Sunday, we have the second online round from the Google Code Jam uh, for those of you who either didn't qualify in round A uh, or that missed round A. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you wanna see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.